Matthew 6, 25, we're going to talk about the more than God. The more than God. Now, we're not, gonna talk, we're not talking about money. We're not, it's really going to be totally. Uh, if, you've got, if you've been in church a long time, you're probably thinking, oh, he's going to talk about money today. It's not money. It's not prosperity. We're going to talk about how to stay full of the Holy Spirit. How to stay full of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, this message is going to change your life. I promise it will change your life. If you, I'm going to teach you how to stay in the rhythm of God. Okay? All right, we're going to do that. So here we go. Oh, my wife's on the front row. I hear her. By the way, this is Pastor Charlotte. And if you don't know, this is Pastor Charlotte. This is my lovely wife. Will you give it up for Pastor Charlotte? Praise the Lord. I am a co-pastor with Pastor Brian McDaniels, our son, who's doing an incredible job here at Life Bridge. And if you're watching, son, I love you. You're awesome, and he is awesome in every way. If you don't know Brian, you want to know him. He is an awesome, awesome kid. All my boys are amazing, and my grandkids are more amazing because they're not my kids. And my daughter-in-law, Pastor Megan, come on, give it up for Pastor Megan, who's amazing. Thank you for reminding me, Sean. Pastor Megan is amazing. And boy, I can't wait for the conference. It's going to be off the chain. Get ready for it. Okay, so here we go. You ready? So Father, let, me, let me pray for us. Father God, just thank you for your anointing. Your anointing that breaks every yoke. And God, I thank you. I need your anointing, God. And I thank you for it. Lord, I can't do this alone. Can't do it in my own strength. Can't do it if I tried. So God, I need you. Holy Spirit, use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, lots of word today and uh, lots to, for you to take home. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your what? Life. What you eat or what you will drink. Nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life. If I say life one more time. Life. More than food. And the body more than clothing. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This week, I have been, I didn't know until Friday that I was preaching. Pastor Brian uh, asked me to preach on Friday afternoon. And so I immediately just began thinking, I thought I was going to launch the Exodus series. Um, And when I went to the Lord, it was just like, I started reading the Exodus and I was like, no, I'm going to exit this. Um, So I started the series by not starting it, all right? So uh, anyway, uh, so... I'm just sitting there at my desk here at the church, and um, I was just meditating on em- being empty and being full. And I, and I started thinking about the people in Scripture that made major mistakes because they were either empty or they were full. And I got to thinking about Esau uh, in Genesis, who was empty of food. It made a poor choice. He sold his birthright for a bowl of soup, right? I got to thinking uh, about someone else. I got to thinking about Herod in Matthew chapter 3, I think it is, who was so full of himself that God took his life because he would not give glory to God. He was taking the own glory. So he fell over dead. He was so full of himself, so full of pomp and pride That he died. So he was so full that he made the wrong choice. Then I thought about Belshazzar, King Belshazzar in the scripture, who was full of wine, which means he was drunk, right? And he decided that he could drink wine out of the out of the the cups from the temple. So he summons the golden cups from the temple and poured them in wine and began to drink the wine, and judgment fell upon him. Again, what he was full of something and he made a bad choice. Sometimes in life, I find it that we make poor choices when we're full of the wrong thing or empty of the wrong thing. That's true for all of us. The, the, the few times that I would worry about the boys in high school, because I remember being in high school, I remember playing a great basketball game in high school and in Afterwards, after the game, when you played a great game or when you played a bad game, both of those things were dangerous. Because if I played well, I knew I was going to get a lot of attention. And I was, you understand, we were going to party, right? If I played poorly, I was going to look for something to satisfy the wrong thing in me, right? right? 
And so I, if I was empty, if I was full of myself, I was going to make the wrong choice. If I was empty of myself, I was going to make the wrong choice. Because often when you're empty or when you're full, you make poor choices. So we get into the book of Acts and we see Ananias and Sapphira, who also were so full of deception and they were empty on influence. So they decided to lie to the Holy Spirit because they decided that it was their influence. It was, they decided it was more popular for them to find themselves being popular than it was to please God. So they decided to act like they sold their house and they gave all the money, but they didn't give all the money at all. They gave a portion of the money and decided to lie. They were full of deception and they were light or they were empty of influence and they went for influence over integrity. And they made a very poor choice. So here's where we're headed. The next slide will help us. Some of us are full of the wrong things and empty of the right things. We're full of the wrong things and we're empty of the right things. I, I think about the times when things aren't going well, that if we're empty in our spirit or if we're in a wilderness or we're, we're, in, we're in a test or we're being tried, that we reach for the wrong source to fill us up. Are you hearing me? It's, it's vital for you to realize that when you keep yourself spirit-filled, everything this, in the soul realm is satisfied. I can remember being on the mission field. Um, I remember, well, in, in not even just that, but even ministry today. Uh, yet, I'll just use yesterday for an example. When I spent the, the hours that I spent with the Lord yesterday preparing for this meeting, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't thirsty. I mean, I took a few drinks of water. Why? Because I was doing the Lord's work, right? In, in Mexico, back in the day, we went to Mexico for 10 straight years and did street ministry. We'd leave early in the morning, get up at 5 o'clock, hit the roads at 6 o'clock, stay up all night, do crusades at night, do drama on the streets. We, didn't, we weren't worried about what we were having for lunch. Why? Because we were full of the Spirit. And the soul realm was so satisfied that the natural realm couldn't press through to that place because our spirit was so full. Listen, it's not unusual. And you might think, well, how do you in the world do you stay full, Pastor Tom? Come on, Pastor Tom. Anybody can't be, we can't stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Fact is, the Bible says you can. You are to be filled with the fullness of God. There is life in you. There is life been given to you. There is a way for you to refuel the life inside of you and to stay so full of God. And this is what the Bible says. I pray, Ephesians, that you be rooted and grounded in love. You may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. To know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God does not make promises. Now, and let's just really interpret the Bible here a minute. So let's go back a minute. He says, uh, to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. And to know love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What is all the fullness of God? You just go, what? What is, it, the, the scripture, this scripture answers itself. It is the height, it is the depth, it is the breadth, it is the length, and it is to know the love of Christ. That is the fullness of who he is. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 13, they were filled with joy. In, Philipp in Philippians chapter 1, they were filled with the fruits of righteousness. So I want to ask you a question. What am I full of? <laughs> Think of Robbie. What am I full of rather than filled with? What am I full of? Am I full of anger? Am I full of frustration? I, I, I got a text this week. Like one person said, I'm done. I'm spent. I'm finished. You, did any of you say that this week? Which one of that was you? But anyway, right? Have you been there? Yeah, have, has, has, your, has your spouse ever said, I'm done? Yeah. 
<laughs> Yours really did say that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm finished. I'm spent. Why? Why do we get there? How do we get there? Because we're filled with the wrong thing. Because we haven't filled ourselves up in spirit enough to keep our soul in check. Because when you are, listen, whatever you're full of comes out. Eventually, what you're full of will flow out. If you're full of love and joy and peace, it's going to flow out. If you're full of anger and frustration and it's mounting and it's growing inside of you, eventually it's going to spill out. Now listen, this is so important and this is, this is a key teaching moment. We are amphibians on this earth. Let's use a frog as an example. A frog has to be in the water and on the land. Right? If a frog stays in the water too long, what happens? He dies. If he stays on the land too long, he dies. A frog has to have both. Can I just tell you, you are an amphibian. You live on the earth, but you have to experience heaven. You have. The first service liked that better than you. Listen to me. You are amphibious. There is, no, there is no peace. There is no satisfaction without bringing heaven down to earth in your life. Everyone knows that prays. Everyone knows that fast. Everyone knows that reads the word. The greatest pleasure you have. Jason Morris and I were talking about this just yesterday. The greatest pleasure you have, the greatest moments of satisfaction that you have are in the moments when you are with the Lord, when you are in his word, when you are so close to him in your home that worship, that Brandon Lake is standing right in front of you singing. You are a champion, right? And when he's doing that, you're like, yeah! Yeah! Right? And there's nothing like having that presence. There's two things you need. You have to have a quieted soul. And you have to have an abandonment of worship. These two things. When God speaks to you, he says, be still. He says, I'm leading you beside Still waters. He's saying rest, right? He tells you to be quiet, be still, wait on the Lord. A quieted soul and moments of abandonment in worship. Abandonment to the point where sometimes you scream and the walls fall down. An abandonment in worship where he is so close to you that you can't breathe because you are afraid he will leave. Without those two things, you're either going to be so full of the flesh, your spirit is going to be empty. And you're going to live your life out in a fleshly manner and not realize the rhythm of the spirit. And the life of God lives in you. It doesn't live beyond you. Are you hearing me? God is present. God is omnipresent. God has a manifested presence. The aura of God is in the world. The aura of God can come in this place. But ultimately, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Most of you are looking for God to come in and do something when God lives in you to do something. And you're looking for an outside source besides the source that God already gave you, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory in you. And most of you are looking for a feeling, a motion, something, or feel good, or something, to, or an aura, or a feeling, or a goosebump. Which, why, need, why do you need an external goosebump when the Spirit of God lives in you? Yeah. Lives in you. Yeah. 
Now, a goosebump's great, and if God gives you one, let it flow. I, I, I don't mind cold chills from head to toe. They're cool. But I don't live for those moments. That's a benefit. It's not what keeps me going. As an amphibian, you have to understand that you live on this earth, but the only way you're going to live strong for God is to learn how to bring heaven to earth, that you have to migrate between this land, this earth, and a place called heaven. And as you do that, you are seated with him in heavenly places. What does that actually mean? It actually means that you are seated with him in heaven. That's exactly what it means. When you learn how to fill fill yourself with the spirit of God, then you will realize that you don't have to act out, empty out. See, what happens is you are... Things happen inside of us. Instead of reaching for God to fill us in a way, here's what happens. Let's just say you are a female and you, you, your father didn't love you or you have this vacuum for love. So in the, instead of going to God to get that love, what you do is you go home and you put on your nicest dress and you go out to the mall and you get 19 compliments because... You need that to feel like you're loved. And that's okay. But the truth of the matter is, that doesn't feel anything. By the time you get home, and by the time, it's okay to put on a nice dress. I'm not, uh, not for me, but it's okay. That's okay, but let me finish the statement. That's okay, except at the end, that does nothing but strengthen what you're trying to get rid of. All you're doing is feeding the flesh. Listen, the flesh cannot be rebuked. It cannot be corrected. If you work with coping skills, let's just say you think, well, I'm, 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 you know, uh, I'm just going to not be angry. I'm not going to be angry anymore. So instead of getting angry, I'm just going to drink a cup of water. Well, all you're doing is just strengthening what you want to get rid of. If you don't take the spirit... And put that thing to death. Are you hearing me? And and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. But the point is this. Whatever you, however, see, this is why Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do. And, you know, that sounds really good. And most people say, well, you know, Pastor told me the things I want to do, I don't do. It, It doesn't even mean that. It literally means, read the whole passage, it really means that your soul does not have the strength to accomplish or not accomplish things for God. Your mind is an enemy against God. Are you hearing me? Your best thought is not on God's plane. Your best human effort does not endear God to you. Neither does God work with you because what you're doing is building up your flesh to become, and it, even your kindness and your mercy, there's nothing wrong with kindness, but compassion is not the anointing. Are you hearing? Yeah. This is huge because what we do, we're empty in spirit, so what we do is, oh, I'm going to watch a movie. Oh, that's the answer. Watch a movie when you're so dead in spirit. Just watch a show. Yeah, I'm sure your spirit will fill right up. These are the things that we try to do, or we reach for the beer. Or the blunt, right? We reach for it, right? Or we call the dealer and say, bring me five, right? Whatever it is, whatever we reach for to satisfy this thing, rather, because listen, you can't fix spirit with flesh. You also, just to help you, can't minister spirit from flesh. Are you hearing me? If I stand up here, and, and had on my muscle shirt and showed you not my six pack but my keg. If I showed you that, and I'm trying to talk to you about the Bible, it would be a little distracting. Why? Because I can't show my flesh and minister spirit. Are you hearing? I also can't fix flesh with anything. I mean, I can't even fix it with my best tools. I can't fix it with my best efforts. I can't fix it with affirmations. I can't fix it. I can only fix it by 
One thing, crucifying this flesh by the Spirit and put to death the deeds of this body, including my good thoughts and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I have to learn how to fight this thing in the Spirit. All right, so I'm going to skip this page and get over to some real action. All right, let's talk about life. Everybody say life. Okay, so if you need life, you know everybody's, everybody, everybody is looking for life in all the wrong places. And, and I shouldn't say that because it's not fair. Let me say most of us. I'm sure there are some of you that are doing the right things, and I pray that we all are doing the right things. But I want to say it again. You can't go for something to make you feel better and think you are better. Are you hearing? You can be empty inside, dead in spirit, and say, let's go to Roadhouse. And listen, I know Roadhouse is the bomb. I love Roadhouse. Carter Grace loves Roadhouse. I, I don't love Roadhouse. I like the rolls at Roadhouse. And that's why I have these, because these are the rolls from Roadhouse. From, from, and the... The cinnamon butter is great, and it makes me feel good. But when I leave Roadhouse, I am not spiritually any better than I was when I went in Roadhouse. So what's, it's a stupid illustration, but if you're reaching for the wrong thing and you come away empty, but if you reach for a God that is your champion, that is your conqueror, that never lost a battle and never going to lose a battle, never going to lose a battle, you come away full. But what's happening to us is we often reach for the wrong thing and hope it turns to the right thing. So this is where we have to understand life. Where do we get life? Where does life come from? You know, Mick Jagger couldn't find life, right? Couldn't find any satisfaction. I could even mock him a little. You know, just, I could do some of that. Anyway, I was raised with him. I loved him he, at the time, not now, at the time. But here's the point. He couldn't find any satisfaction because he wasn't supposed to. Because everything he tried to do to satisfy himself was not a way possible for him to be satisfied. There's only one way for us to be satisfied and to stay satisfied, and that is to reach for life, defined as the God kind of life. It means to be infused with life, which is a source. It means to be alive. Listen, you can have existence without purpose. You can also have life without living. You don't want to be the person that has life without living. So let's figure it out. Where does life come from? I'm going to give you three sources. This is where life comes from. If you're looking for life, you need to know where to find life, and you're empty. Some people don't even realize where life comes from. Life has an existence, and it's not your, you breathing. It has to do with your spirit. Listen, you are a spirit in a body. You're not a, you, are, you are a spirit in a body. If this spirit leaves your body, your body don't work. It has no life. You think you're a human being. You're not. You're a spirit in a human body. The spirit world is bigger than the natural world. There is the things you're sitting on were made by, by stuff, right? Not by stuff, but it was stuff that was made by the word of God. Everything you're sitting on, God spoke it into existence. And we, don't, we forget that. So here we go. Let's go to the next slide. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, and that they may have what? Life more abundantly. He's not talking about money, prosperity, your BMW, your, your, he's not talking about your Rolex. He's not talking about any of that. He's talking about your abundance in your spirit. He's talking about that your spirit is 100% full 
of the fullness of who God is inside of you. Authority, structure, integrity, the character of God, everything that God is lives inside of you and me. He's talking about that kind of life. So number one, this is where the life comes from. Jesus is the source of life. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us, how many things? All things that pertain to life. Again, this, is the, this goes back to the amphibian, to life. That's the natural life and the godliness, which is the word devout. It means heavenly. He's trying to say, yes, you live on the earth, but you have to experience heaven. And without experiencing heaven on the earth, life is going to be the wrong kind of life. So he says there, he's given us all things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Listen, you're not supposed to seek things. Things are never a pleasure. Did you hear about the guy that had the BMW? He's driving down the interstate. A guy sideswipes the driver's side of the car, wipes the whole driver's side of the car out. The guy gets out of the car. He steps out of the car. The police pull up. And the guy driving the BMW screams. He said, can you believe what they did to my BMW? And the police officer looked at him and said, sir, do you not realize your right arm is gone? True story. Because when we think about things that bring us pleasure without heaven involved, this is where we are. We're not supposed to seek things. We seek God who gives us things. We seek his righteousness, and because we're righteousness, things come to us through him. So his power has given us all things. Next slide. He who has the son has what? Life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. That's why your cousin so-and-so, Vinny and them, that don't know God... They're always looking for a buzz, a jump, a thing, a margarita, whatever, something to give them some satisfaction because they don't have the sun. All they have is existence without purpose. You and I don't have to live that way. You have life living inside of you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When we talk about God in abundant God didn't say anything about that. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He didn't say a pond. He didn't say a puddle. Out of your belly shall flow a puddle. Out of your belly shall flow a little pond. No, he said, out of your belly shall flow a river. And not just a river, a river of not water, a river of living water. Not a puddle, not a drip, but a river. When we talk about God, we talk about oceans. We talk about, we talk about not lakes, we talk about oceans, we talk about rivers, we talk about God in in terms that are way, way above anything that you could ever ask or anything that you could ever ask or think. You know what Pastor Brian always says this? He says it over and over. If God is a fire, he's a consuming fire. If God is a wind, he's a what? Rushing mighty wind. If God is God, he is immutable. He is described as inscrutable, unfathomable, infinite. We're not talking about Buzz Lightyear. We're talking about God. Inscrutable, immutable. We're talking about his sovereignty. He is supreme. And some of the preachers used to say he's God all by himself. Right? And there is no other. Because he is. He's God all by himself. And that God lives in you and me. Lives in you and me. Next slide. Life will always. How much time do I have? 12 minutes. Life will always be less or limited without the more than God. I don't care who you are. And I'm not talking bad about Hollywood. But why do they have five, six, seven, eight wives, husbands, spouses? Because they are looking for life. So the first one is the son gives life. The second one is, number two, the spirit gives life. 
Just give me the next slide. We'll just, we'll just glide. Here we go. He that believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We all know that that speaking about the Holy Spirit living inside of us, praying in the Holy Spirit and in the understanding. It, just, it literally means that when you pray, we, you know, those of you who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know that this is an endless river. This doesn't ever go away. Once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it never stops. It flows and flows and flows and flows some more and flows some more. And it never stops. And every time you call upon that gift, it flows. Every time you make a demand on that gift, it, ain't, it don't stop. It don't get clogged up. Are you hearing me? And when you pray that way, you pray the perfect will of God. When you pray that way, you build up your most holy faith. Listen to me. If you're in a test, if you're in a trial, if you're in the worst thing you could ever face in your life, and you're looking for something to fix it, all you have to do, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, listen to me. I'm telling you, this is not magic. This is Holy Spirit. This is anointing. If you will turn on the best worship music that you could ever find and go into a room and pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 plus minutes, do nothing but pray in the Holy Spirit for 30 minutes, I promise you, you'll come out of there different. I promise you, you'll come out of there different. Sometimes it takes two minutes. But I found when I'm in my worst times, 30 minutes seems to be for me. I come out, my faith is different. I come out thinking differently than I ever thought before. This verse is beautiful. It is the spirit who gives life. Remember, Jesus and the spirit of one, Jesus is the source of all life. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am what? I am the life. I am the Zoe life, the God kind of life. Jesus said, that's me. Here he says, the spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. No matter how pretty you make it. No matter how good it looks. Fact is, it might even be a detriment to you. The words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are life. And I'm going to come back to that. I want to go back to the, I want to go to the next verse. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. He's literally, he's literally trying to say, not of, the, not of the scripture. He didn't make you a minister of the scripture. He made you a minister of the spirit. Now, why is Paul saying that? Because, see, the, the um, Pharisees and Sadducees, all of them knew the scripture. They knew how to Bible bruise people with the scripture, right? They knew how to use the scripture. A parrot can use the scripture. How many of you know that? How many of you know that if you, see, this is why the spirit, the spirit is life. The letter, the Bible says, the, the, the Bible says the letter is death. Are you hearing me? In other words, you can, and, and those of you that are, that are too much with the word, you can use the word wrong. You can use the word in the flesh. You can use the word to convince somebody to have sex with you. You can use the word to manipulate people. You can use the word. See, that's all death. That's why when you use the spirit with the word, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, you're going to see how much double anointing you have. Next verse. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. In other words, your mind in its best state, your best thought, the best thing that you do, that's great. There are natural things that don't matter to God, there, there are, and there's things that you do in the natural that aren't judged by God. There are other things when you are carnally minded, when you, when you do things from the carnal mind, you realize that if you're doing the wrong thing with the words of your mouth, you're, a, you're away from the Spirit. Now, it doesn't mean... You're not spirit-filled. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean any of that. It just simply means that for that moment, you're, you're in your carnality. You are doing the wrong thing, and most of us do that out of emptiness. Amen. You hearing? We're empty. We're either empty of the spirit, or we're, so, we're, full of, or we're full of the wrong thing. We're full of bitterness, or rejection, or aggravation, or we're struggling or we've sinned and we don't feel like we can be forgiven. 
These are the areas where we sometimes fail because we can't feel like we can get close enough to God. It's called shame. It's, it's like this. It's like you're telling God, come here, but yet you're holding him away. This is what shame does. Shame goes like this. I can't look at you, but come closer, please. And the closer he gets, the more you push him away. Yeah. And you know you need him. So he says, to be calling him on his death, but to be spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. How many of you need that? To be spiritually minded, to be spiritually minded is what? How can the spiritual mind be life? The natural mind is an enemy of God, cannot please God, can in no way be pleasing to God, but the spiritual mind is life. Here's why. Because the spirit lives here. The spirit will, will command you or give you a commandment or give you an order, or give you an assignment, or just give you uh, whatever, uh, 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 something spontaneous. And what happens is it has to process here. Watch. The soul realm always has to process what the spirit's doing. That's why it's imperative for you to have a healthy soul. If your soul is not healthy, your spiritual life will be affected. Right. Are you hearing? That's why healing, that's why all of these things that the flesh wants to do. And that's, see, it's easier, it's much easier for us to drink a diet Dr. Pepper. I need a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I really need a Dr. Pepper. Or I need a vape. I need a, I got a vape. It's easier to vape than it is to pray. I don't want to vape. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't want to vape in front of these people. But anyway, uh, yeah, listen, I only drink diet. Okay, well, I'm joking. But anyway, so, all right, so here's the point. It's easier to go to the natural than it is to fight in the spiritual. And the bad thing is when you use the natural to fill yourself up or to bring you some sort of satisfaction, <laughs> like I said, when you go to the bathroom, it's all over. When it's, there's, you're, and you're the same. So he says, so spiritual mind is not in peace, but you are not in the flesh. And this is important because some of you think, well, if I get over there, if I'm in the flesh, I'm not in the spirit. No. You're all, look, now watch. This is important because most of us think that spirit is a feeling. It's not a feeling. Being in spirit is being born again. Doesn't matter how you feel, you're born again. Doesn't matter if you even feel unsaved. Have you ever felt unsaved? Raise your hand. I have. I know Charlotte has. <laughs> there's days I proclaim she's unsaved. But anyway, there's unsaved. So, but watch, this is one of the most important passages in the scripture. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, comma, going, next slide. Does not have the, he is not his. If Christ is in you, the body is dead. Woo! Because of sin. But the Spirit is what? Because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give. This is huge. Because you think your eyes can't be saved. You think that, see, listen, look, what, uh, this, grab it one more time. He who raised Christ from the dead also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now that means you're going to be resurrected, but it also means that he can quicken your mortal body. It also means that I had a young man tell me this week and he said, he said, I can look at girls now and never lust because he had a porn problem at one time, a severe porn problem. And he said, I have asked God to purify my heart 
to the point where I no longer lust. See what happened? God can purify your mortal body. Yeah. There's a man in this room, I can point him out, that can say the same thing. Because God can quicken your, he can quicken your mortal body to let go of hatred. He can quicken your, your heart to let go of anger. He can quicken your heart to love. God can touch your mortal body by the Spirit. Now, the last one, I'm done. Okay, this is the biggest one. You ready? Yep. Next slide. Here we go. Don't empty out your fullness. Let's say it this way. Don't act out your fullness. Listen. When you, when you want, when you are so desperate and the flesh is craving, whether that's craving to cuss someone out, whether it's craving some substance, whether it's craving love and, and you do the wrong thing when you're looking for love, or whether it's craving vape, or whether it's cra- whatever it's craving, whatever it might be craving uh, uh, um, acceptance, or maybe you're craving attention because you feel unloved. And you, so I'm trying to say, don't act out of that. Don't empty out your emptiness. But do what? Fill up your emptiness with the Spirit. You know, when I was, when I was using that first year that I was, was getting delivered. And I, I, I had one, one thing I knew for sure, and that was that when I was empty and when I was craving and then when I was jonesing for drugs, I knew that if I left the house, it was going to be bad. That's all I knew. All I knew was if I leave, I'm going to do the wrong thing. So you know what I would do? lay down on the floor I would just lay down and lay and I would just try to quote scripture the scriptures I knew one scripture most of sin shall not have dominion over me I said it over and over and over and over and over and I would lay there until all of it all the feeling the sense that I was, was out of control and the anxiety that's the other listen to me God can quicken your mortal body to let go of anxiety. I want you to hear that. And depression is the same. God can quicken your mortal body. So when you pray, when you decree, when you set up those memorial stones. Uh, Krista mentioned memorial stones in the first service this morning. She had memorial stones on her phone that when she felt a certain way, she would just read the memorial stones over her life. I am loved by God. I am precious in his sight. Those things matter. That's taking your emptiness and filling it up with the Spirit. And I haven't even mentioned the Word of God, but this is what I have to mention. Next slide, and we're going to let you go. The Spirit who gives life, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. I put this in here twice on purpose, so don't think something's wrong. The words, this is Jesus, the words that I speak man alive to you our spirit and they are life this is what hit me that when we speak the words of God from the spirit of God we get this anointing we get a double whammy we get a double blessing. Give me the very last slide. Remember, these words are life. These words are spirit, right? When you take God's word from the Holy Spirit and you put that in your mouth and you start praying to heaven or you start decreeing over your own life or you start making affirmations, godly affirmations, you're releasing the spirit of God in you releasing the words of God in you the death and life are in the power of your tongue and when it's spirit it's tongue it's word power the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the quickening of your mortal body you hear me it's taking your tongue 
to pray the perfect will of God. And those who love it, lead it straight. Now here's the altar call. satisfied. You don't have to be listen, you don't have to have any. Charlotte's not my pleasure. She's my earthly pleasure. If she doesn't be that to me, I've got a heavenly father who can please me far more than she can please me. And I love when she does. But that's not the point. The point is that when we're empty inside God says, my word is spirit. My word is life. And that's for you and me. Three things. Repent. Lay aside the deeds of the flesh. You know what you reach for. Michelob, Himalob, whatever. Netflix, whatever. Dancing with the naked, whatever. You just want to feel good. God says, you want to feel good? Get in my presence. Speak words of life over yourself. Use the power I've given you. And then renounce. Renounce what you're full of. Renounce lust. Renounce anger. Renounce agreement with frustration. If your wife is saying to you, are we going to do this again? Renounce that. Not her. Renounce what she's talking about. And then the last one, and this is the word the Lord gave me, was to to, to resent resentment. Listen, this is the word the Lord gave me. Some of you in this room, you're still in love with your spouse, but you resent them. You love your mom or dad, but you resent them. Maybe you love your teenage son, but you resent what he did to you. Maybe you love one of your children that's in prison, but you resent him for how much money you spent on rehab and attorneys. I'm telling why am I saying that? Because listen, resentment will keep you from being filled. Resist, resent resentment. Get rid of it. Repent. Renounce. Resent resentment. That's the altar call. Bow your heads with me. Father God, for whoever it's for, God, we repent for reaching for the wrong things. Repent for not using the tools you've given us. The Spirit, words of life, prayer, your presence. And Lord, those we resent today, those we resent who spoke against us. Lord, I, I, there's things I could probably resent. I have resentment towards pastors in this city who said the wrong thing. Father, we repent for that. I renounce resentment is able to set up in my heart. And I ask you to forgive me for it. And then... Jesus is the source of life. You can sit here in this service and, and, and I could, you can enjoy the sermon and you can say, well, he's entertaining or whatever that might be. But you know what? Without Jesus, 
None of us have anything. Jesus is the source of all life. And maybe you're in this room and you don't have him. Or maybe you once had him and you don't have him anymore and you really don't want him. But he wants you and you know that. You don't want him, but he wants you. And you know he wants you. And he wants you in the way that he had you before. With every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, Pastor, that's me. God wants me, but I haven't wanted him. But I'm going to receive him now. Will you slip up your hand? We had two raise their hand in the first service. I'd love for 